describing yourself in, in just a minute to your elevator pitch on why we should do anything with you. So I'll start with you, Jason. No problem. Um, thank you for having me, uh, Uzoma. Um, my name is Jason Njoku, founder of Iroko TV. Uh, please go out there and buy your subscription. Um, there is a stand uh, to this side of the hall. It's 3,000 Naira a year. You get all of the amazing Nollywood movies. Just go there, they're happy to help you. So 3,000 Naira a year, Iroko TV. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Uh, my name is Chris Ubosi. I run um, Classic FM, Niger FM, Lagos Talks, and, and the Beat FM, which you can see is the, is the boot that has the most balls in the, in the building. So, I mean, you also just download the apps. You can sure follow us on all our social media handles. And, um, yeah, that's it. My name is Akin Alabi. I'm the founder of Narabet.com. Narabet is Nigeria's. <laughs> Narabet is Nigeria's premier. We pioneered the sports betting industry in Nigeria. So all the sports betting you see around in Nigeria, I brought it in. Okay. So I'm also an investor in some enterprises that you don't know about, and I'm also a politician. I will be contesting for a seat in the Federal House, uh, Federal House of Representatives next year. Thank you. In uh, your state, a better than a federal constituency. <laughs> so if you know anybody there, tell them to vote for me. ABC. Um, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kelechi Amadi Obi. <laughs> I am an all-round image maker. I would like to call myself a storyteller. I started as a painter and then graduated to photography. These days, I'm getting obsessed with cinematography, you know? And uh, it's all about how do we tell the story of Africa. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, my name is... Daniel Oyebanjo, but some of you know me as The Banj. I'm an entertainer in the night. In the day, I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm the founder of The Cream Platform, uh, the future of the creative industry and the gateway for the rest of the world to unnest African talent. Thank you. Oshie? All right, great, thank you. So first question, uh, I think first um, general question. Um, so, you know, in a, so I'm a, well, I work in a bank anyway, and I know that because we have changed the market. So when we, 20 years ago, our customer profile was corporate small businesses. Today it's retail. It's now also um, people even on, on, the, on banks. So it means that, you know, the way we communicate, the way we, uh, the content that we use, and also, the way we share and what we share, what we have to share with people um, has changed. Um, so now there's no more email. It's now different type of content to attract the different type of market because some people can't even read emails. So there's no point in email. So how, first of all, before we go, how, how has the environment in your, uh, in your specific areas changed and what are you doing um, about it? Jason. Um. So I think in this day and age, communication has to be much more rapid. Um, I think for the most part, if you, within the organization of Iroko, uh, we have about 400 people. And if you send me an email, I will never respond. Um, it's either instant messenger, um, WhatsApp, or Slack. So I find that just the speed of communication is super important now. Um, you know, I think it's really great that I can uh, reach out to people at all, all, all hours of the day. And, and weekends and, and et cetera. So I think you're constantly always in touch. And I think that enables businesses or organizations to move faster. I think people are able to uh, be much more efficient in how they operate. Um, I also think that it's, it's great for customers to give you kind of constant feedback. So you know, if, if people are abusing you on Twitter or, or on Facebook, you at least have the ability to, to react much more faster. So within 24 hours, you should be able to, to remedy most of the problems. I, I think from, a, um, from an enterprise standpoint, 
you know, most new businesses starting today will start like that. I think the big challenge is for the older, um, kind of more legacy businesses to shift to that type of, um, of, 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 uh, of business. So I actually want to give you a perfect example within the same company, but within different countries. So um, I won't call the telco name, but in Ghana, um, there was no presentations, there was no proposal, there's no long no uh, conversations. It was a couple of Skype calls. We had a really simple integration done and we wanted to move forward. Whereas in Nigeria, it was very much, no, you have to do the presentation. The presentation has to move from one desk to the other. You have to go and see the person at the desk. You've got to go from one floor to the other to make sure that the person's doing their job and to be pushing. Um, and I think in the end, we were like, well, I, I refuse to write a, pre a proposal. You either know what you want to do or not. And if you want to do it, great. If you don't want to do it, you should leave it. So I think as new businesses are being created, as new ways of communication um, and communicating are being, uh, becoming the norm, I think a lot of businesses will be dragged into that reality. So I think it's just a question of how quickly do you move. Um, and I think that, that's happening and immediately it's happening now. So Aki, let me um, um, ask you a question here. You know, you're, you're in, sports, in sports betting. Now, very interesting and very, very, very successful. So how do you position the communication knowing that, you know, we're in a culture where people think that betting or lottery has negative connotations. So how have you positioned um, that activity in a way that is now acceptable and people are actually diving it into it and doing it at their spare time? Well, um, it's a relatively controversial industry, right? And like most adult 18 plus industries, say gaming like ours, alcohol, tobacco, all these are 18 plus products. So naturally it's going to draw some negative criticisms here and there. So that was expected. So I'm not really worried about that. All I have to do is do our job responsibly, right? First of all, it's a very regulated industry, heavily regulated, and rightly so, right? Because if it's not well regulated, you're going to have charlatans mess, mess up the industry, right? So it's heavily regulated, so we can rest assured that what people can rest assured that what's going on in the industry, they are safe and um, there's no problem at all. Then apart from being regulated by the government, we are self-regulated. We've got an association called the Association of Nigerian Bookmakers. So we regulate ourselves before even the government comes along. So responsible gaming, for example, as long as we can protect the kids, as long as we can protect those who are tired or maybe they've lost a lot of money and they said they don't want to play again, as long as we can protect them, then I, what we're doing, I think, is really, really super cool. I don't think anybody should be worried about it. Okay, um, thank you. Um, next, next question to Chris and, um, and Kelechi. So how have you guys leveraged on technology to stay, um, to stay relevant in this business? And how has it helped your business from, um, from being more efficient and secondly, for enhancing customer experience? Um, from, from being more, technology has come a long way from when uh, broadcasting started. Um, you know, or, or the equipment, the software is a lot more stable, you know, so it's easier. The processes, the workflow processes at work are a lot easier, uh, a bit expensive, but a lot easier and, and more professionally done since there's less human error. But the key thing about um, communicating in, in broadcasting now is that, you know, we've gone from, from um, single to multi, multi broadcasting to when satellite came in, we came down to narrow casting. Now you're we're at um, point casting. You know, we're now, we're, we now have to super segregate. You now have to, the, 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 the axis of uh, communications now in the digital era is the, is the user. The user controls everything that you do. So you, you find now that um, there's a lot more interactivity before you just used to talk to, I mean, when we used to watch TV when we were younger, you listen to the network news and you go to bed. Now there's a lot more interactivity. Now there's a lot more, you know, there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more real, real time. There's a lot, you know, so now we really have to follow the consumer and do what the consumer, how, follow the consumer, let him provide for, 
be where he wants to consume you when he wants to consume you and how he wants to consume you. It's a multi-platform thing now. It's a mano um, play now. And with digital now, there's, everything is converged. On one media, you can put animation, audio, video, everything. So it's a lot more complex. Uh, and again, also, the competition is no more just broadcasters. I mean, you are a competition with your Diamond TV. You're not even a broadcaster. Jason is, <laughs> you know. So, you know, so it, it's interesting, but you just have to adapt. You just have to be stealth and, and, and lean. Oh, well, you know, uh, in terms of imagery, um, photography, to be precise, uh, the past 10 years has been, has witnessed extraordinary you know, advances in terms of technology and the effect, you know, it has on several facets, you know, the production of the content itself, the camera has morphed from film to digital to high megapixel digital, and now it's shooting HD video, and now it's shooting 4K, 200 frames per second is crazy. They're cramming so much uh, capacity and capability into the equipment that as a creator, you, you, you have much, much more that you can do with your equipment. So on the creation of the work itself, the quality has skyrocketed. Uh, in terms of how you expose your work, it's provided an extraordinary avenue for people to consume, you know, the work. You know, right on your phone, you can look at the photographer's latest work and there is no limit. They are no longer, you don't need to wait for a curator or some brother or somebody you know. You do your work, you put it on your Instagram. And that thing that has happened is that the websites are being rendered obsolete. Basically because the attention span right now is so short. People want to know the latest image you've made. So places like Instagram have taken over portfolio. So um, that is one of the things. And uh, one of the most beautiful things, again, that is happening is that it's interactive. You know, you get feedback real time. So you put up a picture and people are instantly reacting to it. And then you could gauge, you know, what it is that is affecting people more. So um, on all ramifications, the improvements have been quite astronomical. But when you start looking at how to make money from it again, now digital distribution of imagery is just a whole new world altogether. There is no limit to the kind of you know, money you can make in that environment. OK, I'll come back to you. but. Um the band. Um, so I know 15 years ago, you know, the cream platform, I don't know how it would have been, you would have been able to make it work. So, so the cream platform is about music, but it's a platform that's beyond that. So could you just care to tell us what, how communication and sharing actually plays a big role in that? Uh, thank you. I like what you said. Uh, you said 15 years ago, there would not have been any cream platform. You're right. Because 15 years ago, we had Mohit Records and the record labels. But today, there's no more record label. The attention span, like you said, has made everything in your hand right now with your mobile phone. And that's why you have so many stars coming up from social media, even with one song or just with a clip or with a meme. So I would say to you that the reason why the Cream platform was created was because we were looking for solution to the amount of talents that are across our wonderful country coming to Facebook, coming to Instagram to look for help or look for one particular service or the other that 15 years ago they will have had to leave their house, take a bus to Lagos, sleep in front of our office, and then maybe if they see me or they see Don Jazzy or they see somebody, they now say, please listen to my demo. But today, you pick up your phone and you dial star 463 ash and you can upload your song from your house, from that remote area that you are. And you can get in touch with that particular mentor that you desire to get maybe um, mentorship from 
or you can connect to that particular record label that you desire distribution from. And if they want your content, it's done digitally. You don't need to waste that transport fare, waste this beautiful swag, and come and stand in front of somebody and then they tell you that you are work. So in this 2018 and in the future, what would happen is you would pick your mobile phone, you would be able to communicate and share your content through the USSD and get instant real-time comment back, which is what the Cream platform offers now. By the way, for those that think that the Cream platform is the cream that Bobiski is using, no. The Cream is an acronym. C is for creativity, R is for reality, E is for entertainment, A is arts, and M, music. It's the gateway to the creative heart of Africa. Thank you. Oshie? So, um, if you ever want communication skills, you know who to talk to. So, um, and, so the man, you, and you mentioned something 15 years ago, um, record labels, today, platform. So, clearly, technology is, has transformed the way we communicate, we um, build content, and we share. It also democratizes that. I can wake up and I can just communicate with my mobile phone. So, it's reduced the barriers for entry. So, I'll ask each of you, to give me two minutes. What are you, so what makes it, how do, um, how do we know that you're going, you are going to be here tomorrow, knowing that anybody can wake up and take photographs and put it on Instagram, anybody can, of course, build their own platforms, anybody can start his own Naira betting, and anybody, every man and his dog can, I mean, radio yeah. station, Chris's radio station, that's a radio station over there, so you can have about 20 in here, and of course, content, you need content and distribution, and which can be done, so two minutes, each of you, tell me what makes you special, knowing that technology can erase you tomorrow. Okay, that's that. We're already in the tomorrow today. Because um, I will start by saying a little testimony. The Cream platform is about 18 months now. It was founded and we launched August 2016. But I had to focus on the business to make this a reality. But one of our biggest testimony in 2017, December 3rd, to be precise, somebody uploaded a song on our platform in need of a video. So you can go to the Cream platform and you can choose whatever category you want. If it's the music, you can choose if you want a collabo, if you want distribution, if you want legal advice. If you don't have money for funding and you want the video, you can choose the video. So someone uploaded a song, I was in Owere and I listened to the playlist, and I heard this particular song, and I said, I don't hear this song before, so I called my team. I said, what did this person upload for? What do they need? And they said, they checked, and they said the person wanted a video. I said, let's shoot the video. So we asked our judges, and they said, yes, the song has potential, and we agreed, and we invited the guy over in January. When the guy was coming, to receive his prize or to meet me for the first time. He was so happy. He brought the producer, his friend, and a gift for me. What is the gift? So therefore, is a banger. That was how I got the hit, is a banger. Do you all know that song, is a banger? Eh? So it's from the Cream platform. In me trying to find solution to someone else's problem, he brought that for me. Now, what did we do? We shot the video, the Cream platform, not me. The Cream platform funded the video. We released the video. And today is one of the biggest um, um, hits in the country right now. And he has also gotten an international deal with one of the biggest record labels to do this, the remix of that song. His name is Mr. Real, and the song is Leg Beg Beg, in case you know it. So that is, in a nutshell, the Cream platform is not a record label. It's a gateway. This boy lives in Agege. He didn't have to leave Agege to come and meet me. He didn't have to line up anywhere. He did his song wherever he did his song. As we all know, content is the new crude. It's on the ground. The Lord deliver it. It's how you can refine it. So in the future, knowing that we are the gateway, there will be so many talents that will come from the cream platform that we will help them come from Agege and put them to the record label that they desire. And those in the sports category that want to maybe get to Asna, you can get on the cream platform as well. Upload that one-minute testimonial that you believe you have. 
and with our partnership with Dogout, who are the biggest uh, premiership hub in, um, in London, who channel it digitally. You don't need to leave Nigeria. I heard Okocha is the one that took Alex to Asna. That's because Okocha knows the way to Asna. But through the green platform, from your Agege, winner. In the future, we would be here as the gateway. Everybody will be connected to us, including Diamond Bank. Oh! Thank you very much. Uh, Kelechi, your, your, your own version of two minutes. <laughs> well, you know, the truth is that um, technology is moving really fast um, and a lot of jobs are getting replaced, that's for sure. But it's mostly jobs that are repetitive um, and easy. Uh, art itself is quite complicated, you know, and photography is an art. Now, right now, almost everybody in this room has a camera, which is your phone. But funny enough, since the advent of the high-res phone camera, photography and the profession of photography seems to have increased, not reduced. Even though everybody has their own camera, they still want to get a photographer. There's such a thing as the photographer's eye. And it is something that deals with emotions. AI has moved very far, but AI has not gotten to the point where it has consciousness. And that consciousness is that unique part of every one of you. It's part of your DNA. It's accumulated experiences that is unique. And that is what comes out when you click the shutter. Now, for people like us, I do believe that experience matters. Having spent years honing and polishing the art of seeing, you know? So even though there is a lot of competition, the ability to see is also very, very scarce, you know? And um, that is what keeps the, 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 the photographer who knows what he's doing, you know? But again, uh, that is also if he's tech savvy, if he's able to make good use of what is available with technology, you know? Um, to show his work and to distribute it. So uh, as far as we are there and we are ready to absorb and, you know, take advantage of technology as it evolves, because to tell you the truth, it's evolving really fast. We are moving from still photography to 3D, you know, and God knows what else is coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, how you won't get kicked out by technology in the next 10 years? Well, first of all, you need to keep your eyes open, right? And be ready to always learn. Don't ever, we'll say yimu, don't ever yimu to any technology that comes. Don't ever say, what's that? Don't worry, we are satisfied, we are cool here, this is already working. If it's not, bro if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? It's a very, very wrong mentality. Look at the history of sports betting and lottery in general, it was just paper coupon. Then later, there were the computers and servers in the, sh in the shops. Then it went online, the internet. Then you've got apps, then you've got USSD, right? Uh, sports Pesa, a Kenyan sports betting company, it's, it's one of the, shall I say the biggest in Africa. I don't have the figures, but I know it's one of the biggest, if not the, if not the biggest. Most of their, it is sponsor everything. I'm sure those of us that are football fans, you can see it on Everson's shirt. Last season it was Hall. Most of their income comes from USSD betting, right? Sports betting, when Betro 65 said they were not going to use, they were not going to do retail, there was not going to be any shops. They tried to uh, open about 15 shops, they closed it down. Then later they they concentrated on online, and I think they're the biggest sports betting company in the world, and they're just online, 100% online. So if they had said, no, we don't want to hear anything about internet, let's just do what others have been doing, they won't be where they are today. 
Okay? So you just need to keep your eyes open. What's going on out there? What have they developed? The whiz, the techie guys out there. What are they developing? What are they thinking about? What is happening in another industry that is not happening in mine yet? Because that's one great way to do it. Something can be happening, disrupting an, uh, another, in another industry, and you can feel you're safe. No, people are going to bring that same technology into your own industry. So you need to be the first to move and adopt what other people are doing in their industry. Thanks, well done. Chris. Um, well, radio, radio has always, I mean, the, 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 the dirge has always been sung for radio forever. I mean, when cassettes came, they said the radio was finished. When, um, when Walkman came, it's always been, it's been going on and I've heard it for the rest of my life. But um, Nielsen's last report say that um, in, in America, 93% of the population heard radio in, what, in the last week. Um, even with Cream Platform and Tidal and Spotify and all the streaming services, 57% of people still discover new music through radio. All the algorithms that um, Spotify and Tidal are using to curate playlists and, and all that. They're effectively being radio stations. They, they create, you know, they, you see, radio, radio has that, um, radio has that immediacy. It has that, you kind of like have faith in the person, a person on the radio. When they play music, the band still come, comes to, like, 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 you still brought it to our radio station, even Before. though you have cream platform. You know, so it's there. You feel a kind of connect to radio. So it's going to stay. But, but like I say, there's going to be, there has, every radio station, we're just building out Abuja. We've finished the fiscal structure, but we're not starting because we're not happy with the digital properties yet. I mean, that's how important digital proper, social uh, digital properties are to us right now. And so long as you focus on like I say, the client being the axis, the customer, the listener being the axis of, of the new com of communication in the digital era, you, you'll be all right. I mean, you, you spend money now harvesting data, interpreting data. That's basically what uh, media houses do now. We're no more platform uh, holder. It's now listening to your client, listening to especially stations like Beat FM, where we have very savvy, classic FM for people like me. I don't know how to listen to radio on my phone. I listen in my car and I listen, uh, you know, on, on the app or something. Well, you know, but for things like Beat FM, Lagos Talks that have more uh, uh, savvy, tech savvy, and therefore uh, customers that are bombarded by a, an avalanche of information, you know, you have to what we do is we mine that the data, we do town hall meetings, we, we take feedback from whatever interactions we're having, and we even let them, we let them program for us. You know, like our news now is, is not what was in the papers. It's what's trending on social media, it's what's trending on, on, on you know, so you have to evolve, and, that, and that's what we're doing. So I don't, and then with the, Legendary traffic in Nigeria. There's no radio ain't going no place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Jason, your two minutes. And okay. So, um, very early on, um, I discovered that, look, you can't stop disruption. If someone's going to disrupt your entire industry and change the framework, you just have to accept it. So, eight years ago, I wandered into Nollywood. All of the most strongest players then they're literally nowhere to be seen today. Um, and somehow they just enabled me to walk in there and just turn everything on its head. I have no doubt that someone in the near future will probably try and do that to, to, to all of us. Whether they succeed or not um, is, is the different thing. So from back in 2013, I've been making investments in guys who I've come across who I believe are gonna have a fundamental impact on, on industries. So there were young guys in the late 20s or early 30s, he will fundamentally change Nigeria. Whether you want to accept it or not, they will change Nigeria. My philosophy is really simple. Be very early and give them a bunch of money and hopefully join them on that journey. But I think for me, it's 
I expect at some point to be disrupted, but at least I have three children. I'm teaching them from a very early age. So if so, whoever disrupts me, at least my, my, my son or two daughters will be disrupting them as well. So whether it's flying drones with my four-year-old son on a weekend, I, I teach him maths myself. Uh, he will definitely be, even if he doesn't do computer science at university, he will know how to code, and I'll, I'll teach him that myself. You know, when they recently asked, for like, at school they were talking about dogs, dogs, dogs. I got my kids a robotic dog. Um, they understand how voice recognition works. So for me, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm grooming a, 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 a clan of Njoku's almost 3.0, so when, when someone disrupts me, at least I can bring them in to, to, to fuck them up. <laughs> Tech first, where anything can be said. Um, so uh, that brings me to my last question, so we can give it uh, time for the audience. And so let's, um, so uh, you, you talked about kids, and so I know like when I look at banking in 10 years time, I look at how my kids are consuming data, are doing things, I know that the way people bank today is going to be, has to be different from the way people will want to bank. So I know that, for example, in my own head, it's going to be mobile. I know it's going to be a lot of iconology, less words, and more, should I say, different types of content to engage and to connect them. And so to reach people who don't want to listen to English but just want to you know, um, interactive, intuitively do their banking without knowing they're doing banking. So for you guys, how do you see your children interacting in your own space in 10 years' time? And one minute is one minute. No, so when I was young, many years ago, they used to give us toys which you, you, you kind of played with by yourself, cards or stuff like that. I bought a drone. Um, within 30 minutes, my son knew how to control it. And I was thinking back to when I was young, that would have been magic. It literally would have been magic. The fact that you can just go like that and the thing goes up 10 meters. So I think the fact that he was able to learn that so quickly, how intuitive they're building things now, I, I think I don't even have the courage to sort of think what the next 10 years are gonna be like. So I, I'm gonna pass that along to perhaps my, my learned colleagues here who can answer that. But for me, I, I can't even imagine the world that my kids will end up growing in and they're only like, sort of nine months, two years old, and, and four years old. It's going to be, um, for us old folks up here, it'll be like so, it'll be crazy. Chris? Um, yeah, if, like I was saying about broadcasting, <coughs> legacy media used to provide content for the newer media. Now the newer media doesn't need them to do that. They, they, uh, they, they actually almost curate content for legacy media now. So what will happen in the future is, The legacy, traditional media just has to be ready to adapt to whatever it is that you, you have to be, you have to be agile, and you know you have to keep training. I don't say it in apocalyptic terms. I see it in, in, in a collaborative term. I mean, you know, whatever is going on tech-wise, just be ready to adapt. Otherwise, you. Like I said earlier on, keep your eyes open and um, and be very quick, move very fast, and and for the children, our children coming through, well, they don't have to be tech, uh, tech experts, but they should all, we have to train them to learn as much as they can learn from different, through different resources to them, from different sources so that they can learn from medicine to literature to agriculture to tech. Let them be very, let them be versed so that when these things happen, they're not going to be shocked because their generation, it's going to be, they're really going to go haywire. They're really, really going to disrupt a lot. So we should, we should really, really, then when, when, they, when they grow older, we should try and encourage them, keep, keep learning more and specialized knowledge, be it in uh, any form of tech you want to go, be it medicine, be it anything. We need to push them to actually go and not just generalize the way most of our parents generalize, like you just have to be a lawyer, you just have to be a doctor, you just have to be this, right? We need to encourage them right from when they get into secondary school to get into, don't let me start giving parental advice because my child is not even there up there yet. Oh well, I mean, the, the speed at which technology is moving, it's almost unimaginable where we are going to be maybe in the next 20 years, uh, really. I mean, uh, artificial intelligence right now is teaching itself and learning things at an astronomical speed. Um, uh, I would advise people to look at their children 
um, to pick up skills uh, that will make them to be able to interpret what is even going on. I mean, where it's going. Uh, I remember reading a magazine some 10 years back called Omni. It's all about science and tech. And they were talking about nanotechnology. And now, nanotechnology is all over our phones. And that was just 10 years ago. And when they said, what is one nanometer, one millionet of a millimeter? And they are manufacturing machines at molecular level now. It's a matter of time before you have a real Iron Man suit. You know, in fact, I see people hovering on YouTube these days, you know, without a backpack. <laughs> no, I see it, you know. And um, so I, I think the, the best thing to say is to keep your eyes open, get some special emotional skills that a machine cannot replace you with, <laughs> and also understand how it works so that you can take advantage of it before you become toast. Exactly. In, in my industry, hmm. in the creative industry, music industry, it has already changed. Um, ten years ago, if you wanted to say you were a musician and they would take you serious, you have to actually have some different things together. But um, today, you can have a single yourself. Yes, DJs have singles bigger than artists that are artists. The DJ did not say one word, but it's his song. And it's the biggest song in the country. So who says tomorrow now, Diamond Bank cannot have the number one song in the country? Meaning that, and when it's time to perform, people will gather like this, and one hologram could just show. Oshé? I've seen it online. They had a concert, I think it's Coachella, some years ago, and Tupac's hologram came. So if I think about the future and I think about my industry, I think anything is possible. And everything that you've seen in a Hollywood movie or in a Nollywood movie is definitely going to happen, including Avatar. So let's just get ready and prepare for it. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you very much. So I think clearly, I mean, I think we can summarize that we don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be crazy. But I think um, to sum it up, I think what we have to all accept is that I think the illiterate of uh, tomorrow is not one that it's not about English or maths. It's about people who can't learn, unlearn, and relearn. Because what we learned, what we knew, what we, our experiences today might be irrelevant if we don't tool up uh, for tomorrow. So with that, thank you very much, panel. And now we'll open up for questions. And we'll have, uh, since, we, since this, is, this is too many men here, we'll have the first two questions from women, not men. Any? Or no women? No ladies? Cocolets. A lady? Mamalets. Sissilets. Granilets. Okay. Where are the lets? I say all the men are hustling. Men are here. I'm the Um. Hi everyone, my name is Benga. I'm a broadcast journalist. I'm concerned about jobs, jobs, jobs. And uh, we've often heard the buzzword uh, disruption. I'm wondering, and I listened to the panel uh, when Deloitte had the presentation, and they talked about no collar jobs. That means robots are going to take over. And we understand uh, the unemployment situation in Nigeria. So it's technology. Is there any way we can leverage on technology to create more jobs, or will technology take away jobs? I also want to ask Mr. Aki Alabi just, just if... Just one question, just one question. Yeah. So we can get more people. So let's... If Real Madrid is really going to beat Liverpool 4-1 in the finals. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so who, um, who, who'll take that question on jobs? Oh, well, Hi. well I think... No matter, forget the doomsday analysts, right? There will always be jobs, right? And the more the technology, the more fantastic companies are going to be created. And when you create fantastic companies, there will always be roles for humans. There will be roles for computers and there will be roles for humans. There will always be jobs and jobs. If, we, if these tech companies don't come out, 
there won't be any jobs in the first place. So they actually should be supported to grow and grow. Fine, they will have computers, they will have robots, but they will always be humans. In my, my company is heavily dependent on technology, both the retail and the website. But we hire over 1,000 full-time staff, right? So that's a, that's a lot compared to the average business out there. So if we didn't come, if we didn't come, uh, if we weren't as big as this, and we are as big as this because of the technology, right? If we had done everything manually, we wouldn't be hiring over 1,000 full-time staff. But because of technology, we're able to expand and expand and hire more human beings. All right, so it's good for the, definitely there are going to be more jobs as more technology com company comes in, and of course, Real Madrid will be Liverpool for one. Jason, well, I bet. So um, I kind of sit on the other side of that spectrum, um, and I think at the moment the world needs to skill up. I think there are certain types of jobs which. I think the machines and the robots will 100% take over. It might not be in all industries, but if especially things around food processing, manufacturing, packaging, all of those things, the robots will come and take them. It's a question of who's robots. Now, Injoku Robotics in the near future will be, will be doing something to help at least obviously uh, accelerate that future. But I think one of, one of the biggest challenges in Nigeria is we have a huge amount of people but they're largely uneducated. They're definitely not well prepared for the digital reality that we're in. And it's not just Snapchat and Bob Risky. I'm talking about actually how to do basic things online and like have basic education. So I think like, look, if the, if the society that is Nigeria doesn't skill up, doesn't embrace that reality, then it deserves to not have jobs. And that was exactly what's gonna happen. Thank you. Um... The gentleman with the cap in front there. Where? Where? The girl? Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Prince, a hero and founder, NMDB.TV. Um, my question goes to Mr. Njoku from Iroko TV. Um, considering the fact that your platform is a heavy data consuming platform, I'd like to know how the problem of slow internet and high cost of data is affecting your brand. And um, are there things you're doing to actually fix this? Like, that is, provide um, good internet service to people in small communities. Thank you. So we solved that, like, a year ago. Um, as I said, if you're not only Rocco TV subscriber, there is a booth over there in the corner. If you go over there, see, on the back of every one of our T-shirts is data-free downloads. We essentially can move. If you have space, we can move 100 movies to your file without any need for data. So we've actually, we've solved some of these issues. So we, our view is really simple. We're not a telco, we don't care to sell you data. All we care is that you get those movies. So if anybody uses Zender, does anyone know what Zender is? Zender file sharing. If you use Zender file sharing, we can move a movie directly to you. As long as you're only Roku TV subscriber, you can watch that content. So we've basically solved that problem. And that's why we are growing and all the other people are, are not growing. And they should all die. So we have a lady. Yeah, right. so, and, and okay. I'm sorry, that will have to be the last question. So you, and after that, we can bombard them and ask them questions outside. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. I really do love this panel. And I like what I'm hearing. Now, we are talking about communications because that's what everybody here is doing, pouring out content that people will kind of listen to and help direct their lives. Now, watching American movies um, and their music, what they preached was the American dream. We watched these movies, sci-fi movies, and they preached the future. Now, what are Nigerian content creators, be it for music, for movies, for photography, and radio, doing to consciously push technology in Nigeria? If the government is not responding, what are we doing? How much pressure are we putting based on the content we are creating that would help you know, Nigeria become um, a technology-driven country. Thank you. Well, we saved the best question for last. So I think I'll, I'll ask everyone to give their own opinion. Okay, so uh, yes. the question is why... Well, I don't... I, don't um, I use content. I don't um, produce... Create. So, so it's, it's an interesting question, I think. Um, 
at the end of the day, to use Iwoko TV, you literally have to know how to use Android. So in order to actually access the content, um, for the vast majority of people who can't afford pay TV, you actually have to get pretty smart about how to use an Android device. Now, like, do I have some kind of agenda where I'm essentially trying to uh, push technology, push, push mathematics? Yes, I would love to have that agenda. Will people watch the content? I'm, I'm not entirely sure that they will. At least for now, let my market sell. When I have millions and millions and millions of uh, subscribers, um, then I can now focus on philanthropy and we'll now start to use that one. But at least for now, if, it, if, you, want, if you want witchcraft, we have it. If it's 419, we have it. If it's your, your mother-in-law, Wahala, we have it. Anything you want, we have it. So again, as I said, in that corner over there, Iwoko TV booth is there. <laughs> the people around here have their uh, T-shirts on. Go there, and they will help you, you know, they will help you get moving. Thank you. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, I've, I've always been a strong believer in um, telling a positive story about what's going on in, in Nigeria. And, and that's what we try to do. That's why it took me such a long time to start a talk radio TV. Talk radio is talk radio station. That's the most successful format of, of radio everywhere. But it criticizes the government a lot. So I had to make some money first so that if they shut me down... I would... <laughs> so um, it, it's, it's something that I, mean, I, I happen to think very strongly about and we're doing a lot in that wise i mean we do a lot with the bbc they're not necessarily the best but they're the people that offer us the best kind of training right now to do programming that that um talks about the ills of the society and you know takes on head on the government it's not that we don't like the government and i'm apolitical by the way and that's true i'm not pdp i'm not sorry I'm not, uh, I'll still vote for you, it doesn't matter. You know, but, but I really do think that we should tell that story and, and, and we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Well, I'm not too sure how we can tell the Nigerian story with sports betting, but um, what we do, we do our own little way to project Nigeria. Um, we're trying to put in a lot of Nigerian football league to be available to be bet on. It's available, but it's not regular. The reason is our business is very time sensitive. One second is important, right? But you, you see a Nigerian league game supposed to kick up at four, it's kicking up at 4.10, or kicking up at five minutes to four, right? Or 6 p.m., right? Half time takes longer than normal. So these things are, they are very important. One split second can ruin a sports betting company. Okay, there's this uh, company that wanted to provide live odds for Nigerian League so that people can bet on live betting. And it's a British company, and I said to them, I said, let me help you get people that can, that can, that I trust, that can help you go to the, because they have to go to the games themselves and be sending feeds back to the office that there's a pause, there's a goal, so that the odds can change and so on. For those of us that understand sports betting. So I said, let me try. I have some people I can vouch for. I said, no, we got that settled. Okay. They started. And Nigerian League was on, on our website for the live betting. And everything was fine. So these people have actually started. And the following week, it was not there. And I called him up. I said, Will, you guys have brought down Nigerian live game. I said, the people we sent played, played games with us that there was a goal. They did not send the data to the office. So uh, they had had their guys who quickly bet on, who quickly bet on, on the team, on the odds, because they've seen that there's a goal. So they quickly bet on the team to score the next goal, the player to score the next goal. So they didn't send it. So they stopped it. So they tried for only one week. And Jason, about last week, I was telling you a personal, exp uh, a personal experience about a department I created. It's a very sensitive department. And I created it for, um, it's called trading, where they can settle bets and open matches. And these guys actually did something similar. And the match will have ended. They'll go and open it, place bets. And they actually 
took about 200,000 euros from us. And because it was going as part of normal winnings, it didn't, it didn't raise much flags until I was doing a check and I spotted the particular bet and said, this bet is unusual. This bet, it was a Premier League match that was supposed to start at 3. And they, had, they played this bet at 5 p.m. How can? So I told my technical providers to send me a trail. Sorry, I'm taking your time. Send me a trail. And that was how we discovered. I sent SAS after them. And obviously, they are in jail now. Uh, that's why I never joined the end SAS campaign. They helped me a lot. So, so because we, we, we try to push Nigerian. We want to do what we can to push Nigerian content out there. Then apart from that, we do some good because we sponsor Nigerian leagues. Shooting Star Sports Club of Ibadan, 3SC. We are the official sponsors, even though we have relegated, but we are still sponsoring them. Um, so we try to draw our best as a Nigerian entity. Oh, well, um, that was a very good question, by the way. Um, got us all thinking about so what are we doing about the situation. Um, you see, I believe that perception is reality. The way people see themselves, they will eventually start acting that way. And the way other people see you is how they will treat you also. And then after a while, you will start seeing yourself that way. And that is the bane of Africa. Africa has very, very serious perception problems. They see it as the dark continent, as a place where you have poverty, corruption, death, and all sorts. And that is how come, just recently, that they released the movie um, The Black Panther, it became such a hit. Because after all these years of watching Marvel uh, comic movies, for the first time, they are showing a technologically advanced Africa. It's pure fantasy, you see. It's just a perception, somebody's imagination. But you see, people, even on social media, are looking for the Wakanda uh, visa and looking for the embassy to go to Wakanda. People are greeting like this. And that will show you how powerful it is to create an impression. For the past 20 years, what I've been doing with my photography, actually, is creating fantasies. I would bring somebody like Omotola, then I'll bring a whole team, makeup artists, hairstylists, stylists, put clothes on her, and we say, can we tell a story of, um, let's say, this super successful princess? And then we'll make a picture, and then people look at it, and they say, oh, wow. So it's, you create that kind of image as opposed to the image of a dying child, or strife, which is also there. But then, those kind of images create hope. And if we can have an army of image makers create a, whole num a good number of those kind of images, you can change the impression of the continent. Thank you. Yes, I'll take it from you, from where you stop. Perception is very key. Um, before I came into the industry, which is a very long time ago, you could not see a musician sit in all these kind of places. They only consider us as come and sing and go. And for those of us that we stayed through to it, our parents told us, who do you want to be like? How are you going to feed your family? That was a very common question that I used to hear. My mom would tell me, Talofevijo, Obeshe music, Talofevijo. But we changed that by first of all changing that perception. When we started, even though we could not wear big chain, I would wear gold blade chain. And I believe that myself and my generation are responsible for changing the perception of the music industry where today every household now can point to one superstar and say, oh, do you want to be like OBO? Or you'll be like Whiskey, Or you want to give somebody an assurance? That is just because it is now real. You have to dress how you want to be addressed and you have to fake it till you make it. So we have faked it to the creative industry and now we have made it. If the story 
uh, writers, the script writers, can also have that perception in their mind and start writing stories that is what they perceive. Very soon, the consumers will start enjoying it and um, we'll see it and we'll enjoy the Wakanda village forever. But we cannot put it, our faith on the government. We cannot put our faith on anybody. You have to take it by yourself. Use our industry. If you ever believe in the music industry and you have followed the story, we didn't have no support from anybody. Don't and worry, I'm no going to... <laughs> Thank you. Now we go support you now. We have the numbers. We, the numbers are hearing us. And now we have the technology to talk to the numbers directly from a click of a USSD. Ah, the government is in trouble. So thank you um, very much. And thank you for that question. And really, and that's why we have TechFest. TechFest is here to just create that platform to tell people that Nigeria is not sleeping. We have the technology. We have the resources. And most importantly, we have the entrepreneurs and creative spirit. Thank you very much for this panel.